I call this meeting of the Onslow County Board of Commissioners to order and thank everyone for showing up on a rainy night. We'll begin tonight with a word of prayer from Mr. Hudson and a Pledge of Allegiance from Deputy Manager Cotton. Please bow with me in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now and ask your blessings upon this meeting and the business of Onslow County. We thank you for the many blessings you've already given to us, Lord, and ask your wisdom upon the Board of Commissioners as they make decisions impacting all of our citizens. Lord, please bless those that serve to protect us every day, no matter where they're at, either here or abroad. Keep them safe from harm, dear God. Give peace to their families. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Once again, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, thank you, Sheriff, for being here. If you have not turned your... Uh, phones to vibrate or off, please do so now. <clears throat> the board affords you two opportunities to speak at public comment. The first opportunity is at uh, a three-minute interval, and you must uh, hold your comments to items that are on the agenda. The second opportunity comes towards the end of the meeting and is for five minutes. And you can speak on any topic that the Board of Commissioners has authority over. We ask that you sign up in the back of the room, <clears throat> list your name and address and the agenda item you're speaking on. You'll be called forward in the order that you signed up. If the clerk or the manager has your name or address incorrectly, please uh, change it and let us get it corrected for the record. Uh, we ask that you make all comments directly to the board in its entirety. We will not permit any audience participation during your comment time, and we ask for no endorsements of candidacies or businesses. The commissioners will respond if they wish at commissioner comment time. At this time, I asked if there's a can a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of adopting the agenda, say aye. 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 Agenda passes. We have a consent agenda. Consent agenda. Can I have a motion to adopt it? So moved. Okay. okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Consent agenda passes. At this time, we'll have our first public comment section for three minutes. Mr. Manager, is anyone signed up? Madam Chair, no one has signed up for the first public comment period. Okay, then let's move right on to items four and five. If you'd present those items, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item four, general items, Piney Green Road sidewalk construction agreement. I'll ask Mr. Ben Warren, our planning director, to please present this item. Director Warren. Hey. Chairman and Commissioners, for your consideration this evening, we have two agreements involving the construction of a section of sidewalk along Piney Green Road. The section in question lies between Halltown Road and an area just west of Lynchburg Road. As you can see in the pink areas that are in the map in front of you, the city of Jacksonville city limits are split along this section of Piney Green Road. As part of the Piney Green Road widening project, the existing traffic signal that's at the intersection of Piney Green Road and Creedmoor Road is being relocated to Halltown Road and Piney Green Road. And as a result, a new crosswalk will be installed at that location. The problem that they have is that between Halltown Road and the city limit um, line to the west, there's no existing sidewalk in place right there. So the residents of the um, Highland Forest Homeowners Association have requested from the Department of Transportation that a section of sidewalk, it's about a thousand, excuse me, a thousand linear feet be installed along that section. The Department of Transportation is not in the business of maintaining sidewalk, and so they've agreed to construct the sidewalk if there's a project sponsor to maintain the sidewalk. And because the county is also not in the business of constructing or maintaining roadways or sidewalks, 
the homeowners association has reached out to the county and said if the county will act as the project sponsor they will enter into an agreement with the county to maintain that section of sidewalk indefinitely going forward so for your consideration this evening we have two agreements the first would be an agreement between onzo county and the department of transportation for construction of the section of sidewalk and if that agreement is approved there's a second agreement for your consideration that will be a maintenance agreement between the highland forest homeowners association in Onslow County, in which they would assume maintenance of the sidewalk indefinitely going forward. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Mr. Warren, may I add something for the board's uh, information? I would recommend to the commissioners that the commissioners sign an agreement with DOT contingent upon the pre-signature or the pre-execution of the agreement with the Homeowners Association. Uh, we should not sign the agreement with DOT before we have that other piece of documentation. Okay. So moved the language that you just used. Okay. Is, is there a second? Second. Um, Julie, you got the language that Jeff recommended. Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay. Um, you know, Ben, I've had people before that have asked me about the county uh, putting in sidewalks uh, down a, a busy strip of the road. Uh, this is the first time in my memory that we have done such a project and it's only because that there are other entities that are willing to take the responsibility over for this? Yes, ma'am, you're absolutely correct. So the reason the county is, what role are we taking? We're the intermediary on this? Essentially, yes, ma'am. In order for the Department of Transportation to install the sidewalk, they have to have a project sponsor that will carry out the maintenance. And there again, because we don't um, carry out maintenance or construction of sidewalks, the Homeowners Association has stepped up and said they would take that role if we would serve as the project sponsor. So essentially, that's all that Onslow County's role is, is the project sponsor, the intermediary between Department of Transportation and the Homeowners Association. And, and that will be taken care of through your office? Yes, but we'll monitor any, um, if there's any issues that come up as far as maintenance for the sidewalk, which typically with a sidewalk project, it should be years before any maintenance would be required. But any such um, requirements that would come forth by Department of Transportation, we would take that and we would work with the Homeowners Association to ensure that's carried out. Okay, all right, I'm good. Um, What's, uh, I have a motion and a second. What, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. <clears throat> Thank you, Ben. Item B is creation of an economic development fund and future industrial building project. Onslow County government has sought to develop N.A. Burton Business and Industrial Park in an effort to create new jobs and commercial investment in Onslow County. As part of its economic development efforts, Onslow County received 2046000 from the North Carolina Eastern Region. Uh, as I pause here, I would like to say that uh, Vice Chairman Buchanan served as uh, the Board of Commissioners representative to the North Carolina Eastern Region and then the North Carolina Eastern Alliance and represent the county's interest in bringing that $2,046,000 back to Onslow County. This money is specifically earmarked for economic development efforts. In addition, the county received over $1.2 million in North Carolina Rural Economic Development funding to open access to large industrial areas of Burton Park. Recently, Jacksonville Onslow Economic Development Incorporated has offered to donate $250,000 in private contributions toward a future industrial building. In an effort to create better processes around economic development funding, the board is asked to create an economic development fund within inside of, if you will, the county's general fund. Further, to designate that proceeds from future sales of property within Burton Park for business and industrial use would accrue to this new revolving economic development fund, which once again is inside the county's general fund. In addition, Joe Ed, Jack Alonso Economic Development, has proposed a public-private partnership to build a future industrial building along the roadway that's going to be constructed inside Burton Park using North Carolina Rural Economic Development funding. The building would be between 25,000 and 30,000 square feet and with 28 to 30 foot ceilings. And the actual um, preferred building would be a 30,000 square foot building with 30 foot ceilings. However, until bids come in, uh, we're not quite sure where bids would come in, so you don't know quite how much money that would cost. And, and there is an, an upper limit 
to the amount of money that Joe Ed and the county could fund. Uh, the proposal is that the Board of Commissioners use at least that $250,000 in pledged private donations from Joe Ed and cash pay the remainder of construction using existing earmarked economic development funding originally received from North Carolina's Eastern Region. There would be no borrowing for this construction project. And specifically, the money to be used for this cannot be used for any other type of expenditure. It has to be 100% economic development use. It came from the license plate tax uh, back when there was the Global Trans Park and, um, and everything that, that citizens in the Global Trans Park area contributed to that. Uh, right now we do have Mr. David McColl in the audience who is available, our Council County Finance Officer, could answer questions about any project budget ordinance. And we also have Jacksonville Onslo Economic Development Chair Chairman, Mr. Ed Garris, who is available to present the Joe Ed request uh, for the need for a future industrial building. It should be noted that the construction numbers within the project budget ordinance are estimates only pending bid openings. The total project cost is currently estimated at $1,434,924. The specific action requested of the board, uh, following any questions the board might have, would be to adopt a resolution which has been provided to the board that establishes a revolving Onslow County Economic Development Fund within the county's general fund, as well as a project budget ordinance to create a new future, in future industrial building in N.A. Burton Business and Industrial Park. Uh, Madam Chair, with that, I would ask uh, if the board has any questions or specifically if, Mr. if the board would like to hear from Mr. Ed Garris about uh, the Joe Ed contribution of $250,000. Okay. I'd make a motion. Uh, you'd, uh, hold your motion. Uh, you'd like to have a presentation by Mr. Garrett? Not so much a presentation, but the quick question that I have. And uh, Jeff, let him take the podium if it. Mr. Ed Garris. Good evening, sir. How are you? Thank you for having me. Good. And, and this is a very quick question. I just was wondering: is, is this the first time that I could, that the request for economic development fund? As far as a, that be part of the general fund, is this the first time this type of request has come to the board? Yes, ma'am, that I'm aware of. That's correct. That was all. It was just a very quick one. And I Mr. Garris is accurate. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I would say that the, the funds from um, the North Carolina Eastern Region, they are already in Onslow County's budget, and they are already earmarked. What's you, kind of new and unique about this is that you would take those earmarked funds plus the donation of 250000 or more if Joe Ed would, would care to contribute more. Just saying. We're committed. Um, to, to set that aside inside the general fund as a revolving fund. So what's really unique is that the board is saying this money has to be used for economic development, and we, we could use that to put a future industrial building on, and upon sale of that building or other lots inside Burton Park, it would roll that economic development money over and over again into the future, um, kind of like you've done with the disaster contingency fund. You have $5 million in the county's general fund budget in case there's a disaster, and you just let that sit there and don't touch it for other things. Okay. <clears throat> okay, can motion I motion to a adopt motion? the resolution? A second. Second. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to play devil's advocate here just for a second, um, Mr. Hudson. Any time that you mix pots of money, you run into the the problem that one pot spills over into the other. Uh, do we have safeguards? I know we've done this before. But just to alleviate any concerns that the public might have, that once we get this money into the budget, tax dollars are going to be mixed in with it. Well, right now, um, the money is already in the budget except for the $250,000, which would be a contribution. Uh, I would imagine that the $250,000 would be presented to the county as, as has been discussed in negotiations in two separate, uh, two separate points in time. Uh, one point at which permits are issued for a new building, and secondly, when the punch list items 
for that building have been completed. So in two equal installments, the funding would come from Joe Ed to Onslow County earmarked for this one particular project. It would be the job of the Onslow County Finance Department to make sure that that, that money is spent for only that purpose, and it is already the job of the Finance Department to make sure that the um, North Carolina Eastern Region funding is only used for economic development purposes. Uh, beyond that, uh, Mr. David McColl, our Chief Financial Officer, is in the audience, and I'd ask him to come to the podium. So the funding as it came back from the investment, that would automatically go into this separate fund also? Yes, ma'am. Under the terms of the resolution, which is the will of the county, uh, Mr. McColl and his office would have to take the proceeds from the future sale of that building or from current sales of lots and place it inside the general fund in an economic development fund. Uh, Mr. McColl, would you like to elaborate on how you would be doing that? Oh, I think you summarized it. It would be on our financial statements at the end of the year. We would track it uh, separately within our general fund, and then it would come. It would appear on our financial statements as, as a reserve for economic development each year, whatever that balance was. So you, you, you put the investment into the building, you turn around and sell it. The, the proceeds <laughs> we would receive from the building would be bookmarked, would be earmarked for uh, future economic development, and it would be tracked uh, you know, f separately from the other funds. But it would collapse into our ultimate fi general fund financial statements at the end of the year. But it'd be a reserve section of our fund balance. Okay. So it, this is something that we've done often before with having funds within the general fund. Um, so it's not some strange or created monster that's never been tried before. No, it's not. It's not like like uh, Mr. Hudson was referring to before. The disaster contingency is earmarked separate within our general fund. So it's kind of the same type of mechanisms that are in place. And the, the, fund, the funds that we will be expending uh, are funds that have specific requirements before they can be spent. And, and we meet these requirements every day with what we can do with tourism money as opposed to what we can do with uh, an assortment of different funding. That, uh, that's not something strange or unusual for us either, is it? It's not. It's not. It's a good point bringing up the tourism funding. That, that is something that we, again, within our fund balance is, 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 is in a reserve section of our fund balance. Mm -hmm. So it only can be spent for tourism okay. needs and, 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 and development, things along those lines. Okay. Okay. The, I got one. The the money that uh, economic development is putting in the two hundred fifty thousand dollars towards this project that that money becomes part of that fund also. Um, in a sense, yes, it does. It does. It's it's an investment into the into the building. So it it, it would be it would be tracked within that same fund. Correct. Okay. My next question is: If we sell the building, and hopefully we can do that, and we sell the building for more than what we got in it, that money also ro rolls into the economic fund or does that extra money go to the, to the general fund? No, that it, 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 would, it would be rolled over into an economic development fund. Okay. okay. Any further? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Item C, interlocal agreement to study hardened structures in New River Inlet. During the June 13th Board of County Commissioners Budget Workshop for fiscal year 17, the town of North Topsail Beach presented a request for $250,000 in matching funds to conduct a study of permanent hardened structures at the north end of Topsail Island in the New River Inlet. The Board of Commissioners indicated that all options relative to protecting navigation and shorelines should be studied. The board indicated that a written agreement that sets forth the will of the county be drafted for consideration prior to any commitment of funding. During the June 20, 2016 Board of Commissioners regular meeting, the commissioners unanimously approved an interlocal agreement which was forwarded to the town of North Opsal Beach for their review and consideration. The town of North Opsal Beach approved the interlocal agreement during their July 26, 2016 meeting and then subsequently forwarded it back to the Onslow County Board of Commissioners. The specific action requested is to accept the fully executed interlocal agreement and authorize the chairman and finance officer to approve the necessary budget amendments to fund the county's 50% of the study exclusively from tourism fund balance. And uh, specifically, um, 
commissioners, although not written in that specific action requested, I would say that the board had not previously agreed to any amount over $250,000. So it's not 50% of anything. It, it would, based on the interlocal agreement, be 50% not to exceed $250,000 or $250,000. Yes. Pleasure of the board. Do I have a motion? The motion is so moved. I'll second it, but I, I got a couple got questions. questions. Okay. Well, let's have some discussion. I just wanted the, the agreement that we sent to North Topsail Beach was agreement that they had to agree totally on what the uh, contract was or the uh, agreement between the county and North Topsail Beach. It didn't change when it come back. It's the same, isn't it? Yes, sir. The <clears throat> town of North Topsail Beach considered their agreement in their last workshop, and they did not change any wording of the agreement that was originally sent to them. And I want to make sure that when we talk about hardened surfaces, that we 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 that they are studying every one of the hardened surfaces, not just terminal groins or jetties or some other type um, structure that prevents erosion. I think that's in our agreement too that they study all all the options. Yes, sir. Um, they are looking right now at. Uh, there's probably not more than, according to the engineers that, that were at their workshop, there's probably not more than seven different comparative analyses. So jetties might be one, or um, terminal groins might be another. A third one might be a jetty and a terminal groin, but there aren't, there aren't that many different types of hardened permanent structures. And right now, the scope of services uh, that, that is kind of the study that would be funded through this, says study available options to maintain the navigation channel to authorize depths through the New River Inlet, increase sediment buildup in the erosion zone at the northern end of top North Topsail Beach, and protect adjacent shorelines from further erosion. Firms should use no more than seven comparative analyses in consideration of the available options. Options should be prioritized based on their effectiveness in meeting all three of the aforementioned objectives. So basically, Firms would have to look at all the different types of permanent structures and uh, and actually determine the best design options available to meet those different needs. From the county's standpoint, it's been said that the county's need and desire is to protect navigation. That's number one. Well, we're, we would be funding half the study. The town would be funding the other half of the study, and, and their primary thing is not navigation. Their primary thing is, is to protect uh, the north end of North Topsail Beach or Topsail Island against further erosion. So they wanted that, <coughs> you know, that studied as well. Well, I, I, um, I agree also, but there's two things that we, we, we're looking at. One is navigation of the inlet because of uh, commercial and recreational fishing. But one other big player in this that we should be looking after, and we got state support on that, is protect the training mission of our government getting in and out there too. So that would be what I'd like to hang my hat on is the study showing what would be something that would fix not only their problem, but fix our problem and also the the uh, Department of Defense and getting in and out of the inlet. Yes, sir. In, in but we got to start, we got to start somewhere. We have, we have, uh, if we wait too much longer on a study, the longer you wait, the more the study cost. And we're using tourism money too, so that's another aspect of this. Yes, sir, the, the Marine Corps has said that maintaining the navigation channel to authorize depths would allow them to continue the training mission, but right now the channel is not being maintained throughout the year to authorize depths. It's shoaling in um, pretty steadily. Yeah. That's all I have, Madam Chair. I kind of piggyback on what Jack's saying. My, my concern is if, if, as, as the research of the report comes back and it doesn't show everything that we've asked them to do, let's say it just shows groins. I mean, that, that, that's what they're favoring, groins. I mean, if that's what they talk their engineers are doing, what retaliation do we have for the money that we put forward if we don't get any other information? Well, that's addressed through the scope of services. So the scope of services specifically says to um, to study available options, 
It says, ensure options allow the continued navigational dredging and use of New River as a sand source of beach nourishment, also su supplement hardened structures as necessary, conduct economic analysis that demonstrates how each of the proposed options impacts protection of the property base, uh, provide a cost-benefit return on investment report for each proposed option, provide detailed report of anticipated cost of annual monitoring ongoing maintenance, uh, determination of the best design option to promote navigation of the new river and protect shoreline from erosion, manage all studies, reports, communications to determine the best design option. So it's, it's actually inherent in the scope of services that they are supposed to study more than one thing um, because that's the, that's to me, the entire thrust of this, it is we have to know what is the permanent solution and simply the town talking about a terminal groin does not necessarily mean that a terminal groin is what's best for navigation. It could be something else. Well, see, I'm going to do what Barbara said a while ago, be the devil's advocate. Suppose they say, well, you know, we both notice, all of us notice that jetties are illegal. So they could come back and say, well, it's illegal. We're not even going to do any research on it. I know what it says there, but I'm telling them if they come back and say, well, it's illegal in the state of North Carolina to have jetties. You know, I'm going, Jeff. Yes, sir. And I appreciate our county attorney for, for, um, seven. Agree to the desired result. The parties agree. This is from our interlocal agreement. The parties agree that the desired result from collaboration on the study would be for all of the parties to work together to further accomplish the objective of maintaining the navigation channel through newer inlet to authorized depths over the next 50 years and protecting existing shorelines. To this end, the parties make a good faith commitment to give every favorable consideration possible to collaboration on such further work. However, it is understood that no party is obligated to continue in any project which might be suggested by the results of the study. Thanks, Neil. <coughs> any further? I'm good. <coughs> okay. Million, have you got anything? Uh, I'll just make a statement uh, unless it's incorrect, Jeff. Uh, I don't need a reply. And my statement is that this has been a reoccurring problem for generations. And at some point in time, you have to stop nickel and diamond it and get the professionals to uh, study it and tell you what it is that is needed to solve it. And then if you choose to put that on the shelf and do nothing with that study, that's up to you. But at least you've been told what the problem is. You've been told how to correct the problem. But the way we are right now with everyone going in different directions and focusing in on one aspect of the problem is getting us nowhere except in each other's way. So with that, I appreciate the, the board's motion and second, and I'll ask um, all in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Item five, appointments. Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, A. Mr. Andy Underseth's term expired on June 30, 2016. He wishes to continue serving. Before the board is the possible appointment of Mr. Andy Underseth for the Swansboro category with a term expiring June 30, 2019. Uh, board's pleasure. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. B, Onslow County Planning Board. Do, uh, Mr. Don Beasley, uh, Stump Sound Township Representative's term expired on July 31st, 2016. Mr. Beasley does not wish to be reappointed, thereby leaving a vacancy. Mr. Jack Sides has expressed a willingness to serve and has submitted a citizen participation application for the board. The specific action requested is consider the appointment of Mr. Jack Sides, Stump Sound Township category, for a three-year term expiring July 31st, 2019. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor of Jack side say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, that concludes the appointments. No items were pulled off of the consent agenda. This brings us to our second public comment. Madam Chair, there is no individual signed up for the second public com comment period. Okay. Then that brings us to manager's comments. Madam Chair, just one comment. Uh, this evening I'd like to welcome Crystal Bennett, who is not new to the county, 
uh, and certainly well known to the Board of County Commissioners. This evening she joins us for the first time as the Director of Human Resources. And Ms. Bennett, we appreciate you coming and uh, would like to congratulate you on your new role. She started at 8 o'clock this morning in that role. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. thank you and welcome, Crystal. Um, commissioners' comments and I'll start with Ms. Williams. Well, Madam Chair, I'll make this very brief because it is nice to have a brief, uh, brief uh, meeting this evening, I will say to the public and to my counterparts here. Uh, Crystal, I look forward to working with you. I know that you will do a great job. Uh, I know you've had great training in front of you and um, looking forward to you continuing to uh, work as the HR director, and I wish you the best. And Madam Chair, I'm making this brief. I'm done. Okay, that's good. Cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack? Just uh, congratulations, Crystal, for your appointment. Uh, I know you do well. You've been doing that job all along some anyway, and you had a good person that was helping you get trained for that position. I, I see that our animal shelter director, Howard, you've had your hands full already this weekend and looking forward to <laughs> you getting your feet wet some more. Other than that, uh, I don't have anything else. Sheriff, I'd need to pass some information on to you before we leave tonight. Thank you. Okay. If you can't share it with all of us, don't even bring no, it I up. I can't share it. I can't no. share it with you. Vice Chair. <laughs> Crystal, congratulations. Thank you everybody for being here and good night. Okay. Uh, I don't really have any comments. Crystal, you know I, I've got all the confidence in the world that you'll do a good job. Megan, you couldn't have asked for a, a better teacher. So with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, we're adjourned. <laughs>